we travelled to a funk house in Berlin for a whistle-stop tour of just a few of the countless rooms in the spectacular former East German studio complex. The Funk House complex is home to some of the world's most incredible purpose-built recording spaces, including Sau 1. My name is Anthony Ake, I'm a poet and a composer, and I reside here at the Funk House, where I have a couple of studios, and I also busy myself uh, bringing some energy back into the house. So as you can see, this is a very uh, magnificent house, and uh, it was built in the 50s, and it was a radio station and then was bought by a private owner and has been slightly on declining for quite a few years and about to have a new owner and to come back to some more life. So today we're lucky there's a French quatuor that's preparing Schubert uh, string quartet and uh, here you know every time musicians come here they say the same thing we're enrobed in the sound this is the sound so this room has uh, a few particularities. It was not built as a hall for the audience. The seats that are here were just so they could have their meetings or some people could sit and appreciate, or if they had the Minister of Culture of Russia, they could give him a little you know, serenade. But when they recorded, it was everybody out of the room. Then the room temperature and humidity had to be exactly what they were. So we'd have the 2.4 reverb because that's what the orchestra needs. This is East German precision and no shitting around. This is serious business. As you can see, the room has diffusers on the ceiling and also all the way around and between absorption material, which can also be changed to change the characteristics of the space. What makes it very special, aside from the dimensions, of course, the mega bass traps in the corners and is that the pit here, the way that was organized. So as you see, there's no acoustic treatment, let's say absorption or diffusion on the walls at the uh, human height here. And then all of these steps, what they are is little diffuser reflectors. When you have a whole orchestra, if they're going to play with precision, they have to hear themselves properly. And also everything is aimed at recording. So all the sound is focused on coming back into the pit. So you have the enveloping sound, which is coming from the large space. And then you have a subspace so the musicians can hear themselves with precision and play either in terms of uh, pitch or rhythm with the exact precision. So no matter where people are in the space, they hear each other with no delays and reverbs and things that get in their way. So that's why musicians love it here. Because when they're in that pit, they have the best sound. And this is a known fact, you know, Long Long, uh, Berenbaum, all these big names, they, when they have a project for Sony, they come here. So as you can see, because of the dimensions and the architecture of the space, uh, it was meant for a symphony orchestra. That's the principal goal, but we're not limited to that. You see there's an organ, which unfortunately is non-functional. And maybe someday will be restored. But there are a lot of, of other types of productions that come here and that use the space uh, for its acoustic properties, even though they're playing other styles of music. It's very live room. It has a long reverb, but still it doesn't get muddled. It stays rather clear. The, as far as musicians are concerned, the difficulty is actually uh, not overwhelming the space with sound and staying within the boundaries of what's appropriate. It's a live end, dead end design. Behind you, nothing. This is one of the reasons it doesn't build up. But there are many other secrets. I don't know all of them. We're here in the Salzwei, which is the most versatile space and my favorite space here at the Funkhaus. I sort of consider it my re rehearsal room. I come in here all the time, sing and bring people here to do vocal coaching and so forth. It's uh, well, as you see, there's the Régie that unites both sides that unfortunately last year there was a fire up there. There was a team preparing a very beautiful event in here and they left an electric radiator on all night that heated up some of the wires and then started a fire. So fortunately that was caught on time because this place would have gone up like a, you know, bonfire, but that didn't happen. So this room, first of all, is a recording studio, just like Salle 1. So that means 
the ceiling is not parallel to the floor. The walls are not parallel to each other. The, the, it has a shape. And of course, what you see is all those are diffusers, all those funny looking bars there. And in between, all those are absorbing material. Upstairs, of course, again, diffuser absorbing material. So the sound is very well balanced. And it was intended, the first time they did it, they, they said they were gonna make, mimic the other room's acoustics so people could come in here and rehearse for later performance. And then they rebuilt the room three times because they had lots of means. So this one of the special things about the Funk House is that, you know, I guess the Russians wanted to show the world they could do it up. And the team here was very dedicated and talented. And they also had good uh, rapport between the architects and the acousticians, which doesn't always happen. In the end, they said, this will be our sort of uh, multimedia room and also for amplified music. So we've had lots of productions in here with amplified music. And if the musicians play the game, open their ears and contain their volume and work with the space, we get extremely beautiful results. It's, it's amazing. Again, you know, that's the reaction you get a lot of times from people. They just go, wow, you know, that sounds just like me in the room. That's perfect. You -hoo. You know, it's simple. It just works. That's, it's a, like a human emotion amplifier, this thing. That's what it is. When you let the whole thing just resonate naturally, it gets so powerful in here and you don't need to have strength. You, know, you can just let the room do the work for you. And it's amazing how sensitive and well designed it is in terms of that. I've never been in another space that's that responsive. It's just like top, top, top. The Funkhaus complex is home to many different producers and studios. Jean Boris has two amazing live rooms and two control rooms. Hello, welcome to my studio. It's called Studio P4. It's here in Berlin in Funkhaus Berlin, Nalepa Straße. And I'm here on this area nearly 20 years, 18 years or something like that. And start here to become a uh, recording producer because I like uh, this area, uh, because here are so great rooms with great acoustic and I like to record with acoustics, that's my special thing. The whole building is a former broadcast uh, station from the GDR and all these recording studios uh, are only built for recording, no for, not for audience things, it's only for recording. And in this studio you see here, um, um, we have produced all the rock, pop, world music, jazz stuff, uh, what in the GDR is produced, nearly, nearly uh, all. And the studio has a great acoustic. Uh, the bands uh, uh, love to play here because they can play in one room without walls, without headphones, all together. And it's uh, very easy to, to create a good sound if you like to work with uh, acoustic sound. But it's possible in, from, from jazz to rock, from pop to everything what you uh, like to record is possible in this room. But we have some booths to separate some instruments if it's necessary, but often they all play together here in this room and uh, use acoustic stuff. Yeah, the room uh, was built for, for recording rock, pop, world music. It's a really good acoustic that you have no problem to, to record. I have done a lot of records without any plug-ins or something like that. And drummers love the room, love drummers, love the room, drummers love the room. They play here and the first hit from a drummer is, wow, what's that? <laughs> It's interesting for me, it's, it's every time the same. And then um, I have some microphones, of course I know what I do, but um, it's easy. And then he it comes in the control room and say, oh, it sounds the same, I, I play it. And that's uh, of course a little bit my work, but it's the work of the acoustic of the room. And uh, they built it very clever and very simple. You can see it, it's built uh, only with wood and stone and with curtains. Very interesting for the acoustic stuff is, um, are the stands or walls. Such a wall is um, for um, reducing the acoustic and separate it from, from other instruments. But here they have done uh, twice things at the same time. Uh, they reduce the sound, but um, the, the material 
a reflector sound. If you um, build a little chamber, you have an acoustic. It's not a dry room, you have an, a good acoustic with the walls too, and that's interesting. Or they built the booths, one booth is uh, for grand piano or drums if it's necessary to bring it in the cabin. And they um, built a good acoustic in little room too. It's interesting for me. And that's are the tools I uh, like to work with. And for me, it's interesting not to use plugins or all the stuff. Of course, I do it too. But uh, for me, it's interesting to look for a good acoustic or a special acoustic and to record it how I like it to hear in the end. Yeah, that's uh, it's my main control room for uh, Studio P4, and that's a control room connected to Saal 4, Saal 4. And here in this room, uh, it's an it's a digital studio. I uh, have not a lot of external 19-inch uh, uh, stuff. I do the most things in the computer or in the recording. Uh, I like to do it in the recording. And here I can um, mix, ma have can master the records and can mix in surround. It's uh, often interesting for uh, scores or for some jazz or new music projects to do it in surround. My main interest is not to mix and to edit so much. That's why uh, it's very smart and compact here to work. Yeah, these speakers, it's an old GDR company, but uh, it's international, I think, well known. Uh, these speakers are called Gaitain speakers, because uh, Gaitain is a little town uh, near Leipzig. And these speakers, um, yeah, uh, the, the owner of this company, um, I, I don't know when he starts with it, but in the GR, was uh, these speakers uh, was professional speakers for broadcast stations. And after um, the walls falling down, uh, he became international um, awards with them. And I think they are well known from broadcast stations to studios. And I like these speakers very much because they are very neutral for me. It's interesting to have an clear um, signal, not so much bus boost, not so high, so it's very clear. And for me, it's very interesting. I can work here 10 hours, but the sound not tires me. This is uh, my second studio. It's in former chamber music hall. They produced here all the chamber music uh, stuff they has to produce and was for little big bands and so too and choir. It's a chamber music hall. And um, I have these two studios and I have complete different acoustics and I every time can decide which project is good in which acoustic. And this decision, I sometimes record big bands in this room, sometimes in the other room. In this case, you can see uh, it's a recording for big band without cabins, without headphones. Um, and for me, it's better to record a band in this case, in this way, uh, because they can hear each other, uh, perhaps not so good like in headphones, but they can hear it as they learned it the whole life. And that's why uh, they play uh, better um, dynamic things, better together, bet better intonation. And that's why I like to record it in this way. It's, um, it's a special microphone thing. We um, have a lot of ribbon mics or mics with eight characteristics uh, to bring good, good clean signals. But then every uh, microphone is uh, the, the other instruments are true, but good separated. It's a good sound for big band. And then they can play and we record, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these mics and um, room mics or main mics. Um, we can, we can, uh, it's a good sound in these mics and the other uh, close mics uh, bring it to these main mics and that's, the system builds the sound. It's not a single microphone sound, it's, an, um, it's a sound uh, built from all the microphones together. Yeah, we have uh, these walls or what is it in, in uh, English, walls and... Gobos or... Yeah, gobos. Um, and in this case there is a singer and uh, the singer is good to separate him. Um, and he has a headphone um, and the big band it's normally not interested in the singer because they play uh, the score and if there's an, a musician he has to play together with the singer then he get a headphone too of course or the conductor has a headphone for these things 
and it's possible with this little cabins uh, uh, to have a good separation for the singer or if something fails then we can put it from another take or can or can do an overdub because you hear nothing from the singer in the room and not so much from the band in this cabin but uh, he liked it or the, the singers like it to be in the same room and uh, to build the cabin it's possible to build it here and, but it's a good place for him. We can, we can separate it in a, a complete different room, but they don't like it. They, they like to be with the band together in one room. Uh, that's the thing. And the room is very interesting uh, for me. It's not so much reverb, but a good room sound. Ah, I can perhaps... I take this microphone, sorry. I can show you something. Perhaps it's possible to hear it uh, over the microphone too. Please, could you hold the microphone? You can listen to that, um, especially for the room I, uh, you, uh, I speak now, and you can hear my voice, I think, normal. And if I go some meters away and I speak not louder, not more precise, the same like now, mm -hmm. then it's possible, um, then you can hear that the room don't change um, his acoustic. He's in, in every uh, corner has something like the same acoustic, uh, you can understand me uh, in the same way. And that's interesting in this room, that's why um, they hear each other very good in every corner because it's not too much reverb here, not too less there, it's in very, I don't know, in English. Uh, and it's, the sound is very diffuse here, this is a re the uh, room information is very diffuse, that's the thing. I take my microphone back, <laughs> sorry for some noises. And you can see in the room, I like it, uh, and the musicians like it very much too. It's a um, combination of, um, in, uh, of architecture and acoustic. All the things you see uh, look nice and have, uh, they have a function too. Um, these, uh, the walls are completely different. Um, that's uh, leather. This wall is to defeat the sound and yeah, it's uh, built with uh, stone and uh, wood too. The overhead microphones is uh, Shep's microphones and it's closer than I normally do it, but in this case with this big band it's, in, it's necessary to have it a little bit closer. And I um, like to use Sennheiser 441. The rest is normal, I think. Uh, special is a bass drum microphone. It's a Neumann, it's a new tube Neumann microphone M149. Try that to use this microphone. I think it's the best on bass drum because you can do everything in the end with this microphone. You can uh, produce a good acoustic bass drum sound. You can, uh, you have the full frequency range. You can bring it high, low. You can do everything what you like. And you can, of course, you can compress it if you need it. And there you can see bottle microphones uh, from the GDR. It's nearly the same like the new Neumann uh, bottle microphones. And they are built in the GDR, but we um, rebuilt them completely. But the sound with the legendary M7 capsule is great. And here in this case, we use it for trombone. And otherwise you see, um, a lot of instruments are recorded with ribbon mics from uh, Colts, Roya and AEA. All these ribbon mics are great. I um, often like to bring a microphone into the bass. You can perhaps you can have a look to that. Then I uh, have an acoustic bass sound. I have no pick up, no line signals, only the bass signal and it's, uh, it's a good choice to have good acoustic bass sound. And here's some, for, for this setup it's important in a big band that you have the uh, rhythm section, uh, piano, bass, drums as uh, near as possible, then you have no problems with sound. It uh, looks a little bit strange that the bass player is nearest to the drums, but it's a possibility to have the best bass sound and the best uh, drum sound, because uh, if you go far away, you have a, a great, and uh, not a great, you have an, a long um, signal distance, and that's why the drums become too roomy, 
And so in this case, bring it as close as possible, then you have a good sound. For me it's interesting to do a recording. In this case I prepare very precise the position of the microphone and what for microphone that in the end I have a good recording. The musician likes it, they can bring the rough mix, uh, can, can get it at home, can listen and they say oh it sounds nice and there's no EQing, no nothing. Then I, I have a good uh, source material and I know I can do with that everything what I uh, like to do. Uh, but it sounds good without anything. That's uh, the way I'm working. These are my preamps, uh, stereo preamps, also two channels, uh, mono, two mono channels, but it's a stereo module. And um, these are former GDR preamps in the broadcast stations, in the desks, uh, these preamps um, there. And I I tried a lot of different preamps, but these are for me the best. And they have a lot of um, possibilities you can't find on other preamps. For instance, not only to increase the level, the gain, you can reduce it for minus 30 dB. It's important for me. You can uh, connect, um, you have a source, you can connect as many devices you like uh, on the preamp. You can use it as a line uh, amp, you can, uh, they, they go up to uh, six or eight uh, hertz. For me, it's incredible, incredible to work with them. Good sound. It's a clean sound with a little characteristic thing inside, but not so special. Uh, that's why it's okay for everything I do. Finally, we join Anthony for a look at a reference monitoring room and his personal production space. The, this is Studio Star One. It's a stereo a reference monitoring room is what it is. So you see there used to be soffit mounted speakers in there, like the Gaetans, the same that we saw at Jean Boris. And he has a, a pair that might come back in here. That's why I haven't plugged the soffits yet. The, the thing that it is and that it's going to stay is a room that doesn't have a lot of hardware in it. Because what we want to do in here is listen. What it was made for, all they had in here were seats. And the technical part was over there. And of course, this is also a hub to the rest of the building. So if you're setting up mics in the large hall and you want to listen, really listen, at, with the proper levels and uh, without coloring from the space, you come in here and you can hear what your mics are hearing. And that's the point. Or when you're finished your recording, to decide whether you need another take or not for technical reasons, you come in here and you hear. So this room is actually was measured and approved by the AESCBU and a list long like this of all the Polish, Czechoslovakian and uh, Lithuanian engineering societies that said, yes, this is a reference monitoring room, European level. So maybe there are five of them in Europe. Maybe three are still working. Maybe this is the only one. We don't really know. This room was designed by an acoustician who's still alive, Mr. Hün. And he was in here and showed us when we removed the panels, what we see basically are a lot of diffusers. So of course, diffusers always have some absorption. So as you can hear, it's not a dead room. It, it has some liveness, but it's very controlled liveness. So they actually, they built their own. And when they were done building their own, they also brought a bunch of RPG, because that's one of the references for this kind of treatment and they measured up the, the, the functioning of the RPGs against their own design and decided their, their own design was a tiny bit better or just as good and didn't cost uh, the price of buying all these RPG modules and also made a cleaner installation. So this patch bay is a patch bay to the entire funk house in particular of course to the two large recording halls. So when somebody was doing a live session in there they could come in here and monitor and check what they're doing. And in fact, the reason I recently took over this room, which was be, being used as a rehearsal space, and uh, the lease was up and they asked me if I wanted it. And even though 
I had no way of maintaining it in terms of business. I said, yeah, I got to have it. This is the, the captain's uh, you know, bridge to the funk house. This, of course, is not, no longer really functional. So the intention is to create a RedNet substitute for this, which will be much more convenient, so that we can actually do that again and make recordings from here also. Over, over in that room? Yeah. Oh, well, okay, so that little spree-facing room is like an atelier to write and relax or compose, write poetry, and not always be in a confined space with artificial light. This room, H13, is part of a larger complex, which was a Hirschspiel complex. So there are a certain number of rooms for with, one is like a semi-dead room for sound effects, has like pits for with gravel and sand and cobblestone and, you know, put on your high heels, walk on the cobblestones type of thing. Uh, a hall, which is, well, with separation curtains, so you can create different vaster spaces with staircases, with wood, marble, carpet, hall, so forth. So people could walk from one room to another and have the appropriate acoustic space. There's even like a little uh, uh, booth for, with a telephone. There's a cave that's very resonant where you can make an echo chamber. And there's a smaller room, which is like a smaller cave. So it's very varied. This room was designed to sound like a medium uh, conference space for spoken voice or sung voice. That's why when I came here, the whole thing was for rent, but I chose this space because I'm a singer and this is exactly what I needed. So the, the main characteristic of this room is the ceiling height and the type of diffusers that are on the ceiling. As soon as I saw that, I knew that I was in an acoustic space designed for the voice because that dimension is exactly what you need. And so, as, of course, as you see, it's asymmetrical. You notice the, diffu the diamond-shaped diffusers on the ceiling, the corner bass traps, and of course the non-parallel walls, that's the number one trick, huh? no standing waves, and of course the diffuser absorber panels there. So the acoustic is rather dry, there's, there's no reverberation, just early reflections. This makes that you can build up quite a bit of volume in here and not saturate the room, even if I'm playing bass through a 400 watt amplifier. Well, I keep it at half, but nevertheless, it's absorbing those frequencies. Nobody's rattling, you know, it's working that way. So for singers, for me, it's perfect because it's not a room that sounds good for the singer. It's a room that sounds good for the recording. So we have you know, the acoustic percussion, and there's a whole bag full of that, and, and the hall is full of other acoustic instruments. Then we have our electroacoustic department here, so we have a nice lineup of uh, some good tube amps, old, very old-fashioned. There's a Rivera, it's right now in the shop, a TBR1. There's your Aguilar stuff, VHT, your like old-school stuff, and then a few very modern amplifiers too. So we have a, a nice full palette of tube sounds. Uh, then there's an array of uh, mostly analog, but a few also, same idea, you know, retro futuristic array of uh, MIDI controllers and percussion, and mostly some good old school analog synthesizers. So there's a palette. You pre pretty much, you want to produce something in here. Well, you bring your drum kit if that's missing in your palette, but for the rest, we have it handled. And it's all going to a little DM1000 over there. And the point of that is we have a digital patch bay. So I'm constantly rerouting things. So I can record the preamp signal from a guitar and not have to worry about miking. You can play live and have the real sound in the room because it's going to the board and the signal's being split. One goes back to the amplifier and the other part goes to the recording. Then when I play back the recording, I can route it to the amplifier and you're hearing the same thing. You can make little tweaks and adjustments and you can re-mic it when you're finished. So basically the productions in here are made with one pair of DPA mics, positioned in one pos place in the space and recording all the signals from that position. And I record in stereo and I never use pan or anything. Just if I want, 
you to feel like I'm further in the space, you know what I do? I move further in the space. It works. That's how people used to do things. Now, I've been convinced of that, first of all, from reading about uh, Bruce Sweden producing uh, good old Michael Jackson and talking about using a pair of stereo DPA microphones and doing that. I sort of modified it by using uh, Omni DPAs because I, I wanted those bass frequencies in there, more convincing. Stereo image is a little less convincing, but there's more, a more natural t sound to my ears. And then different things like that. Well, using just like he does these arrays and then just listening to mono recordings made of Frank Sinatra back in the days with one Neumann microphone and you're hearing a big band and three crooners and it's all balanced and perfect. You go, how do these guys do this? Well, they know how to use the space, basically. So I'm rediscovering this. I don't have their skills, but that's the goal. That's the point. And convincing people, little by little, to use these techniques. Like, if you're in a proper acoustic space, you can rediscover how people used to produce music and why it sounds so natural and real and warm. If you like this video, subscribe to the Sound on Sound YouTube channel for all our latest video content. Also, if you want to read the magazine, you can pick up a copy in your local newsagent, download the tablet edition, or find us online at soundonsound.com.